Okay, so let's see if you have the math, knowledge, and skills to find the area of this square inside of this circle. And we call this situation being inscribed. So the square is inscribed inside of the circle. In other words, that the corner of the square here, the corners, are touching the actual circle. And the only information that we have is that the radius of the circle is 4. Okay, so that is the question, and feel free to use a calculator. But uh, if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to solve this interesting little geometry problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Again, we're trying to find the area of this square that's inscribed of this circle. And the only thing that we know is that the radius of the circle is 4. Well, the correct answer is 32 units squared. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus and 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic interesting geometry uh, problems. Now, uh, your friends and family may not be that impressed, but you really should uh, feel proud of yourself if you were able to solve this problem. And if you're kind of like lost here, if you're like, wow, I don't even know where, uh, where to start, well, I'm gonna show you exactly where to start. So let's get into it. This is not that difficult, but you certainly need to know um, some uh, basic important concepts about circles and squares and triangles. I'll get to that in just one second. But here uh, is effectively the problem. So we have this square inscribed inside of this circle. So again, that means that the uh, corners of the square are in fact touching the circle. Now, what do we know about squares? Well, we know that the sides are equal, right? So when you have a square, each side is uh, equal to the other and the angles are 90 degrees. So by definition, this is a square. So the circle, we do know that the circle's radius is four. Now, what is the radius of a circle? Well, you can see here, uh, this is the radius right here. It's, of course, the radius is 4, but the radius emanates from the center of the circle. So here, if I have a circle from the center, from the center out to any point on the circle, that is the radius. And twice the radius is what we call the diameter. Okay, so you can see right here, we have this radius. I'm just drawing this particular radius from the center out to the edge and we have a radius of four. So how can we uh, possibly find the area of this square just with this, uh, this information? Well, what we're gonna have to do here is take another perspective. We're gonna have to look at this problem in a different way. Let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, way right now. Okay, now some of you might be saying, well, do, you know, do I need to know the area of a circle? Well, uh, you, you know, it's not a bad idea to know the area of a circle. You, certainly this is a formula that you should you know, understand, but let me go ahead and just actually tell you what it is. So the area of a circle, just in case you think it's gonna help you with this problem, is equal to pi r squared. But this formula you're going to need to know, that's the area of a square. So the area of a square is simply a, the side times the side or side squared, right? Length times width uh, or the side squared. All right, now let's get back to this perspective. Uh, you know, How can we view this problem uh, differently in such a way that this uh, helps us out in terms of getting some more information to understand what to do in this problem. Okay, that's a long-winded way of saying that. All right, here I drew the radius this way. This is a little bit of a trick. I'm like, okay, here, here's the radius. It's four. So some of you might be like, well, I really don't know what to do here because you know I'm trying to get information about the side. Well, if we think of the radius from the center out to the corner, well, this is the radius too. And so from here down to this corner of the square is the radius as well. So this changes everything because here now, this entire length is actually the diagonal of the square, 
Okay, so this is really kind of the secret of doing this problem. So if this is four, okay, well then this is four right here, and so is this, this is four. So the entire distance of the diagonal, i.e. this part of this triangle, okay, of course we have this square, and we draw the diagonal through it. Now we have two uh, triangles that are the same, but the, uh, the length of this side of this triangle, that's called the hypotenuse, is eight, four plus four, right? So now we can kind of look at our problem in this way. All right, so here is our square. We'll kind of get rid of the circle because now we know that from here, this is the radius, this is four, this is four. So we just kind of now focus in uh, and view the problem in this way. We have this square and what is the objective here? Well, we're trying to find the area of the square. So just algebraically, what is the area of this square? Well, it would be what? It would be this side times this side, right? That's the entire area. So the area of the square is simply going to be x squared. But of course, we don't have these values for x. So how can we find the lengths of this side and this side, which of course are the same side? Well, this is going to be uh, kind of the secret part of this problem. Not the secret part, but the interesting part. And you're going to need to know a, a one or two formulas, okay? You can get away with one formula, and if you don't remember that formula, then you at least need to know this other formula. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about in just one second. But first, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you, um, you know, if you like this content. You know, you might as well go ahead and subscribe. It's a great way to show your support. Now, for me, you know, when you support me, really what, you know, I hope uh, you can kind of look at it in a way of supporting other people that need help in math. Because by you subscribing, it helps that YouTube algorithm push my content out to people that are searching for various math topics or just interested in math. It really does help. So if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification uh, bell as well. And um, if you're new to my channel, I have about 2,000, actually well over 2,000 videos from basic math to advanced math and everything in between. So, I mean, I kind of go up to calculus on my channel and a lot of arithmetic and, of course, a lot of algebra, geometry, trigonometry, etc. So if you are taking a math course, um, it, you know, of course, with at any one of those particular levels, just go through my videos. They're there for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to this problem. So now that we understand, all right, well, here is the square. X times X is, in fact, the area. But how can I find... Uh, what x is equal to. Well, you can use one of two formulas. Now, the first formula, and this is the formula that I'm going to use here, is the Pythagorean theorem, okay? And this is a great formula for right triangles. Matter of fact, it's probably one of the most important formulas in all of geometry. Matter of fact, maybe in all of mathematics. It's pretty simple. The way it works is this. A and B are the smaller sides of a right triangle. Now, remember, a square has a right angle, and the longest side of a right triangle, uh, or longest side, yes, the longest side of a right triangle, not in all triangles, only for right triangles, it's called the hypotenuse, and that's going to always be the variable C. But basically, the Pythagorean theorem uh, states this relationship that the square of this side plus the square of this side will be equal to the square of this side. This is an incredibly important formula. So this is one approach that we could take to solve for x. Okay, now I'm going to take that in just one second, but let me tell you this other uh, formula that you can use. I'm not going to use it here, but uh, uh, this right here, this is a 90 degree angle. This side's the same, this side's the same. This happens to be 45 degrees, and this happens to be 45 degrees right here. So there is a formula, okay, a special relationship. We call this a special right triangle that the hypotenuse, 8, is equal to this x times the square root of 2. That's equal to 8, okay? In other words, if I have this side, let's suppose this was 3, and I wanted to express what the hypotenuse, the length of the uh, hypotenuse um, is, what you do is you just take the side and you multiply it by the square root of 2, and that, in fact, is the length of the hypotenuse. So this is an approach you could take as well. So here, x times the square root of 2 is equal to 8, and maybe some of you uh, were like, you know, that's an easy approach to solve for x. And it is. However, uh, this is not going to be the quickest way. Well, no, you know, it, could be, it could be pretty quick if you're pretty good in algebra. But I'm going to go back to the Pythagorean theorem. 
because remember, are we trying to solve for x? Are we trying to find the, um, uh, the side what x is equal to? Well, yes, we think we do need that, but really we're trying to calculate the area, the area of the square. What is the area of the square? It's going to be x times x or x squared. This is the answer, okay? So we don't need to solve for x. What we're looking for here is x squared. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So a will be, it could be um, this side or this side. It's either, of course, these sides are the same. So uh, we'll have um, x squared, okay, which is the same thing as a squared plus b squared, which of course is going to be the same thing as x squared, is equal to c squared. This is the thing that matters the most with the Pythagorean theorem, that c is always the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 8 squared. All right, so now uh, let's go ahead and solve for x. But we're really going to, all we need here is x squared, because that is the area. So x squared plus x squared is 2x squared, and that's going to be equal to 8 squared, which of course is 64. So to solve for x squared, all I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2, and I get x squared is equal to 32. Now, a lot of you are going to feel like, wow, I have to solve this quadratic equation by taking a square to both sides. Yeah, you certainly can, but you're just going to be kind of um, going more into, you're going to be taking more steps only to have to return back to x squared because x squared is, in fact, the area. Okay, so again, when we're talking about area, we're talking about units squared. So in other words, if this was inches, uh, we would have 32 inches squared. Okay, so hopefully you found this interesting. This is a great little problem um, to just kind of emphasize that you need to really be thinking about what a question is asking. Because oftentimes we can kind of go off on, uh, you know, tangents of like, you know, I need to solve for this. I got to get this and this and that. But, you know, really, if you are clear on what the question is asking, you can kind of think about, all right, what is the most direct strategy to get there? Okay, now if you need help in geometry or algebra, uh, I'm pretty excited to um, uh, let you know right now, uh, the time I'm posting this video, I am running a 50% off sale off my main courses, which include pre-algebra, algebra one, uh, geometry, um, algebra two, and pre-calculus. This is a once in a blue moon um, sale. Uh, so if you want to uh, kind of, you know, enroll in one of my courses to really get my best full instruction, well, these are the courses that are for you. So I'm going to leave all the information in the description of this video to include the discount code. But this is only going to be available up into November 10th, 2023. So if you're viewing this video um, after that time, if you subscribe to my channel or if you just kind of follow me on my other social media, uh, you know, you'll, you know, of course, be alerted when I do run sales. But this is one of the best sales that I do offer. So, again, if you're like, you know, I do need help and I want, you know, you want me to be like your full time teacher. Well, these are the courses for you. OK, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.